So in this problem, we are told that a object is dragged over a table with, it says it's rough, right? That means that it has friction. And let's see. The force of 50 newtons acts at 30 degrees above the horizontal. The object is moved to two meters and it has a given coefficient of kinetic friction. And so part A says, find the work done by the, by the force. Well, let's see. We know that work is equal to force times distance. But beyond this, it's work time, it's force times distance times cosine theta, when these two are not parallel, right? Force and distance are not always pointing in the same direction, and in this problem, they aren't. They point in two slightly different directions, and so we have to account for that. And so our force is 50 newtons, distance is two meters, times cosine, and the angle between them is 30 degrees. The angle between the force and the displacement is 30 degrees. And this is going to tell us our work. And we find that it is 86, oops, 86.6 joules. It's sort of like you put that much energy into it. And our work is in units of joules. Part B says find the work done by the normal force. Well, let's look at that same equation force times distance times cosine theta. Well, we can say that work due to, due to the normal force, work N or something, is, well, what's the normal force? Um, we know we could draw a free body diagram. And let's see. Is dragged over a horizontal table. So what we have to do is make sure that our forces point in the right direction. We know it's 30 degrees above the horizontal. It's being dragged. And so this is the direction our force points. And we've got a friction force. And we can calculate the magnitude of the force, Fn, and distance is two meters. We don't really want to go ahead and find what the normal force is, as we'll see in a few seconds. Well, what's our theta? Well, the distance, two meters, points that way, two meters. But our force is 90 degrees to that. And cosine 90 is zero. So our work from the normal force just goes to zero, zero joules. The, the normal force, since it points perpendicular to that displacement, it's perpendicular, it did cosine 90, goes to zero, and so it does no work. In order for it to have done work, it needs to point in that same direction. And so part C follows that same kind of idea where the force of gravity is perpendicular to it, it exerts no force. And now we look at the energy lost due to friction. So the work due to the friction force, we can call it FF times distance times cosine theta. Well, now we need to figure out what that friction force is, which takes a little bit of work. We have to take the net force in the x and y directions, and we can find the magnitude of the friction force. We can find our distance d, and well, cosine theta, let's see. So we have w equals the friction force, which we're not gonna go through the process of calculating. I'll leave that to you guys times distance d of two meters times cosine, and what's our theta? Well, this is the friction force, and this is our displacement. The angle between them is 180 degrees. Cosine 180 is negative one. So we're gonna end up finding negative work. We're gonna get some negative value, right? Which is what we expect, because this is sort of a, a loss, it's an energy loss. Is friction just takes away work. It just causes work to be lost in the form of heat. And so we kind of expect it to be negative. And that's sort of why this cosine 180 goes negative and we expect a negative result. Don't be scared by that. And part E, find the total change in the object's kinetic energy. So 
let's see. We know that our kinetic energy is equal to the network. We know that our energy we put into the into the object has to go into kinetic energy. We're putting in work and it has to go somewhere, right? And so how do we find the network? Well, we can add up the work from each force, the work of gravity, plus the work of the push, plus the work of friction, plus the work of the normal force. We found what all of these are, and we can just add them all up. And we'll get some network, and that's going to be equivalent to our kinetic energy. And from that kinetic energy, if we wanted to, we could find you know, the object speed. But that's beyond the scope of this problem.